So at this point, to uh, to crawl our content from our public uh, exchange folder, we're going to jump back into Central Admin. So let's do that here. And just to kind of refresh you again, how we we are going to be able to manipulate um, the search settings here. First off, we're going to go to the home page of Central Admin, and then we're going to go to Manage Service Applications. And we're going to go to Search Service Application. And on this page uh, on the left here, you're going to see something that uh, under the crawl sections uh, that says crawl rules. So the first thing that we need to do to be able to actually set up this, uh, this connection here is set up a crawl rule for it. And in this path section, we need to be able to enter um, the URL path for the public exchange folder that we've set up. Uh, for this case, I've already set up a public exchange folder I want to crawl, but I'll show you an easy trick for getting the URL for those particular folders. So here I've opened up uh, Microsoft Outlook Web Access and navigated to the exchange folder that I want to be able to, to access. And if I go up here and I just copy this URL here, then I'm all set with the path that I need. The nice thing is by doing this, you also make sure that the server has access to this particular uh, public folder. Every once in a while, you'll find that your server might have some security issues where it, uh, it can't get into necessarily things where you just assume that you're going to be able to get to because you can get there from your desktop. So if you can't access the public exchange folder that you want to in your server's browser, it's pretty unlikely that SharePoint's going to be able to access that information as well. So here I'm just, uh, as again uh, I mentioned, I'm just going to copy this URL. And I'm going to jump back to Central Admin. And we're going to set up a new crawl rule. And this is the particular path we want to use. I just threw in that URL. And right now, by default, we're set to exclude all items at this path. Since I want to uh, search this information, I'm going to change that, uh, that radio button there. You can also specify the authentication model uh, that you want to use, but I'm just going to use uh, what I have right now by default. And I'm going to click OK. So now I have my new crawl rule set up. And then the second step to, uh, to getting that information crawled is I actually need to set up the content source. So here I'm going to go to content sources. You'll notice I just have my uh, standard local SharePoint sites content source set up right now. So I'm going to go to new content source. And name for this, let's go with uh, night night garden emails because uh, that's the, uh, the faux company that we've set up here that these uh, this whole email box is about. And here you'll notice that you can use this similar process for uh, indexing websites, file shares, things like that. Uh, in this case we're obviously indexing an exchange public folder. And I'm just going to use that same URL that I used uh, there for the crawl rule. So let's just copy that back in again. And I want to crawl the locations here. I want it to run on a full crawl. You can set up various different crawl rules uh, at this point. Maybe, uh, maybe it's quite a large database uh, that you're trying to crawl, and you don't want that to kick off every single time. Or maybe the content just isn't updated very frequently, so you don't need to uh, devote the system resources to crawling that all the time uh, with your normal crawl schedule. So you can set up a, a different crawl set schedule there. And in this case, I want to use this information right away, so I do want to start a full crawl of this particular content source, and then I'm going to click OK. So after clicking OK, uh, we'll see that the new, uh, new content source has been set up, and the crawl is actually uh, going to start kicking off. So uh, we'll wait just a second, then we'll refresh the page, and we'll make sure that that crawl actually uh, starts working for us. Refresh the page here, so we can see that oh, that the the crawl has started kicking out, and I know that this is going to take a couple couple minutes to complete. So uh, let's go do something in the meantime. 
So I mentioned earlier that uh, that Robert has posted a uh, a post all about um, how to use open source connectors there, uh, and then also how to uh, an update for that YouTube. Uh, federated source connector. So here that can actually fa be found on surfray.com and we're going to go to resources here and we'll jump down to the tech blog and you'll be able to take a look at that. So uh, here you're actually going to see uh, if you're looking at this uh, within a couple days of this uh, this post coming up uh, one of the top uh, articles here is all about this federated locations and Robert has a brief summary about his article here and actually if you click here you'll jump out to uh, prosharepointsearch.com where Robert has uh, has posted this article and if you go down this blog a little bit you notice that he actually has uh, has posted that OSDX file so that you can just download it right there. And so uh, we'll leave that post up on surfray.com on the, the tech blog and make sure that that connection's there. So jumping back from there, you also notice that we have another bit of information here on this tech blog that's very useful. And uh, this is this free SharePoint connectors link. And what this is is just a little post that we put together that lists out the protocols that SharePoint is able to handle out of the box. And we also list uh, links for the additional search connectors uh, that you'd be able to set up. So make sure that you check out our tech blog there so that you can find that full list of resources. I'll also notice that under, under the resource tab that we do have a webcast sections here. And so if you're watching this, uh, you've already obviously stumbled across uh, at least one of our webcasts. But uh, here we actually list uh, all the additional webcast uh, recordings that we've had in the past. So you can find out a wide uh, bit of information all about how to leverage search in SharePoint. Uh, so here you will notice one about uh, using the managed metadata services, um, choosing different uh, search solutions when you're planning out SharePoint, uh, using best bets. And then we have archived articles, uh, for example, uh, our very popular one on customizing the search refinement panel in SharePoint 2010. So it's a lot of uh, cool, interesting tips and tricks on how to fully leverage SharePoint. So with that said, we'll jump back to uh, central admin see here and see how this crawl has been progressing for us. Let me just refresh that. Good. So uh, my, my crawl status is now idle. I can see that I did a full crawl. It took 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Obviously, we don't have a whole lot of information here. You can also check the crawl logs if you wanted to. And this is really useful for making sure that you actually have crawled the information that you're looking for. Uh, so again, I clicked on this uh, crawl logs bit over on the left-hand side here. And I see that I have 16 successes. So that means I, I must have uh, e crawled 16 emails. Uh, but also make sure to look out for errors. Um, if you're not connecting to your content source correctly, maybe you've entered the wrong URL for uh, for the content source, you would get a top level error there and by clicking on that error you'd be able to see uh, what the particular issue uh, that you're running into uh, would, would be. So at this point let's actually check out uh, some results. Let's jump back to my search center and we'll do another search here, get this updated. So now we'll notice that after I did that search, I now have some additional authors that have appeared here. I have noticed that I have a new site that's shown up, and I noticed that I have a, a new email refiners that have shown up. So let's actually check to make sure that we, we were able to pull the content from this source. So here I'm just going to refine in and just say, hey, I just want emails. Then let's just do some emails that I've written. So here I just have a couple hits from uh, from myself being the author here, and we can check these out. This first one here, let's make sure that uh, we want to actually open that. And here I can read uh, the email that was archived in that public exchange folder. So this is really useful if you start to get into uh, wanting to collaborate with teams that need to access uh, access public public emails. Um, maybe you're uh, you need to make some uh, emails public for compliance reasons as well. So uh, this would be very useful in that particular case. 
Now, for anybody that's using Ontolica Search, or actually Ontolica Search Preview, uh, you guys do have an additional little benefit here. So let's pop back out to my, my home page, and I just want to mention this in Ontolica. Ontolica is using the existing connections that you've already created. So by making those connections to uh, these additional, to crawl these additional content sources, you're going to be able to uh, pull those back automatically in Ontolica without any uh, additional work. So here, let's just choose Night Garden here. And we'll just drill down and we'll go down to my emails. And we'll go down again to uh, to the items that I've, I've authored. So unlike Base SharePoint, where I just saw a little bit of the information right here, uh, here I'm actually able to get a preview on that email, and I didn't have to actually set anything extra up. So here, I'm going to click on that, and I see that I can see the from, to, it's all formatted nice, so I can see that right in the browser. Even more interesting than that is if I do the full document preview here, I can actually get hit highlighting on that preview. So I said night gar uh, we we search for night garden here. We'll actually see that Ontolica search preview is doing uh, doing highlighting on that particular term within my result here. So again, extra little feature that's automatically going to be enabled there for anybody that's using Ontolica search preview. And this will work on any of your content sources. This isn't just uh, for emails. Maybe you're indexing web pages or um, you're indexing uh, additional file types like uh, uh, things that you're collaborating on with Adobe Illustrator, or InDesign, or AutoCAD files. You'll be able to see those as well. So at this point, uh, let's jump back out of my demo environment, uh, show you a couple uh, final things, and we'll get wrapped up here. So here we'll jump back into my PowerPoint, and again I just wanted to point out uh, the pre-designed search connectors that are all already available uh, for free through Microsoft. And uh, I did show you that we do have that posted on surfray.com, but I wanted to provide the list of those uh, here for you. Uh, the URL to our tech blog can be found down there at the uh, the bottom of the slide, uh, and that uh, also has the link for uh, for all our previously recorded webcasts. If there's some additional things that you'd like to learn about search in SharePoint 2010. Uh, we have these webcasts every couple of weeks, uh, so stay tuned for uh, additional uh, webcast recordings that can be found there. And also, I'd like to uh, open up uh, the opportunity, if you'd like to reach out to either Robert or I, uh, we'd be more than happy to, uh, to speak with you about uh, additional th ways that you can improve search in SharePoint 2010 and additional ways that you can extend the search user interface uh, with both uh, refinements uh, and, and preview capabilities with, uh, with Ontolica uh, search and preview for SharePoint. And then finally, I'd also uh, like to have the shameless plug of, uh, of our book here. Uh, I'd encourage you to go out and uh, check out our book, Pro SharePoint 2010 Search, that uh, is now available through A Press. Um, you can go buy that on, uh, on Amazon.com or directly there through A Press. But with that, I'll end our webinar on using uh, federated search connectors in SharePoint.